What's up, guys? This is Crypto with James talking to you today about Moon River. Um, Moon River is one that has absolutely capitulated in terms of price. It, it launched at the peak of FOMO in the markets. Um, and fundamentally, I do believe this can go back to some seriously big highs um, for a number of reasons uh, that I'm going to cover in this video. Um, but there is, this could be a massive gain of the next bull, like massive gain of the next bull cycle. Um, also, uh, there's been some news coming out of uh, Gemini. Uh, the Gemini exchange has obviously had a bit of a rough ride lately, so I'm going to cover what's happening there. Um, because that will have an impact on a number of you that, that have had trouble withdrawing um, from Gemini. So I'll talk about that in this video too. Before I get into it though, guys, if you're new to the channel, these are the first 26 coins I spoke about when I made the channel. Uh, they're also the first 26 coins I owned when I made the channel. Uh, had you just put in 100 bucks, just 100 bucks into each of these coins when I released videos about them, and you were still holding all those cryptos, you'd be in profit, doing everything wrong for around 6.3K. And that's ignoring your investments for two straight years, <laughs> riding them into a recession. You'd still be in profit for 6.3K. But if you'd done, done the right thing, and sell them last year when the markets were rocketing like I did, then that $2,600 investment could have netted you a profit of 123 grand. It's a big, big difference between doing the right and the wrong thing. Now, as I said, uh, <clears throat> I sold all these off last year. These are not the coins I own. If you want to see my current portfolio, you can go to copymycrypto.com. The link is above, and there's a clickable link in the description. Um, on that site, I share my portfolio. I give the members real-time updates anytime I buy or sell a coin. I release videos on a daily basis talking about the markets. We have tutorials set up for the members. So anyone that's brand new to crypto can watch these and start getting involved. Um, very, very easy, very, very simple. And look, the channel and the site have a massive history of success. There was no one in 2020, like lit literally no one in 2020 that spoke about Phantom uh, as a big gainer for the bull cycle, you know, let alone predicting 100x gains, which I did. Um, I said, in fact, the only Udemy course I've ever made was about Phantom. I said this is going to, it was called the best cryptocurrency investment of 2020. And I said Phantom will 100x. Ended up doing 677x. Now, when I find the next Phantom, I'm going to get the members, uh, I'm going to go onto my site, I'm going to tell the members all about it, I'm going to tell them what I think it can run up to in price, uh, what kind of gains it can make, what percentage of my money I'm putting in, and they can copy a lot. If that interests you and you want to take the work out of crypto for yourself, then go read the site now and remember everything that you read on there, you can verify on the history of the YouTube channel. Right, Moon River. So really, really low market, like insanely low market cap now, 37 million. You know, you bear in mind at one point, this hit heights of like 460 bucks or something. Um, and now it's priced at a measly $6. So huge capitulation in terms of price. Now, if you're unfamiliar, right? Moon River is a, a parachain for Kusama. Remember, Kusama is the parachain of Polkadot. So the beauty of Kusama and the beauty of the parachains that land on Kusama is they are the experimental versions of the things that end up on Polkadot. So Moon River is the experimental version of Moonbeam. So anything that they try that they want to do for Moonbeam, they test on Moon River first. So Moon River actually opens up a lot of opportunities in terms of, <clears throat> you know, being the first to trial out new protocols or to trial out new uh, products. So Moon River actually opens up a lot of opportunities for people that just want to play around. Now, the fact is, is in the short space of time Moon River has been up and running, they've grown to a pretty substantial ecosystem. You know, you can see the parachains that they're connected with. Uh, they've got NFTs uh, that have started popping up pretty well. Uh, they've got a nice uh, DeFi um, ecosystem as well. You know, you can see Sushi, you've got Linear, Lido, um, Impossible Finance, Injective, Orion, Cream, you know, there's tons there. Icon. Um, and Moon River is 
effectively one of the smoothest run power oh, it's probably the smoothest run power chain right now or that and moonbeam in terms of the polka dot ecosystem uh, they also support all the nft bridging from ethereum and it allows users which allows users to move nfts nice and quick um as i said they've got an nft subsection now which is starting to grow um they've still got a way to go because obviously ethereum is going to like the Ethereum network is going to be the king of NFTs for, for foreseeable. But Moon River is all about effectively um, ensuring that as many people as possible can get access to a, a sort of new wave of, inter, of DeFi interoperability. Now, Moon River isn't specifically DeFi in the same way that like Akala is. Um, but what Moon River is, is a smart contract platform, right? It's the same in the same way that Moonbeam is a smart contract platform for um, Polkadot. Now, if you're unfamiliar with a smart contract, smart contract is just a, a, like a, a smart contract is where effectively parameters are set up. And when those parameters are met, the contract is triggered. The simplest way you can put it is like... Uh, you know, if you order a takeaway pizza and they say, oh, 30 minutes or less. So you go, cool, that's a deal. You put your money in escrow. If the pizza is delivered within 30 minutes, they have met the criteria and the, effectively the, that was required. And that, that money that you put in escrow is triggered and released to the pizza place. If, however, they do not meet the criteria, that, as in they don't deliver it in under 30 minutes, your money is returned to you from escrow. That's about as simple a way to put smart contracts as you can. Now, what I like about Moonbeam is the, the speed that they've, sorry, Moon River is the speed that they've grown combined with the net amount of transactions that they've experienced. Now, they've done 24.74 million transactions over the past year. That's damn good. That's really good in terms of volume considering it's been up and running for a year 24 million is not shabby at all um and i do expect that while we're gonna see and while we're currently experiencing sort of i mean i hate the friggin phrase crypt <coughs> excuse me crypto winter but um it's an i suppose it's accurate and the thing is, is we're going to see, we're seeing less volume on a consistent basis now for obvious reasons, right? Why, why would we see more? We're not, we're not going to see more volume while the markets are absolutely tanking. Um, and you can see from Moon River, you know, they were, they've actually been generally pretty consistent in terms of uh, transactions. The only one that was kind of weird was the 16th of November basically that week around or the, about yeah about a two week period where it just really skyrocketed in terms of transactions um although that was the the second wave of this sort of bull cycle around then so november we saw a lot of yeah we saw a lot of volume come through particularly there you can see it um so yeah um so other than that it was is really it has been quite steady like per day you know 20,000 north of 20,000 transactions now now we've come down to 20 but we were consistently at around 50,000 transactions per day that's pretty damn good for a network that's pretty new and then when you factor in what Polkadot and Kusama have achieved in the past year in just a year Polkadot have had 2,500 monthly active developers they've seen uh, 360,000 XEM transfers they've seen a thousand forkless up, uh, upgrades. They've seen seventy-four parachains, three hundred plus DApps, five hundred and fifty projects, four million dot paid out by Treasury, one hundred thirty million dot lent through crowd loans, and a to uh, five hundred total w uh, Web three foundation grants signed. That's in a year. That's in one year. That's insane. And they actually break down a bunch of the. I actually quite like this as a thread by Dot Insights. They break down a thread of like every key Polkadot development over the past 
uh, and sort of Kusama development over the past year. And they're substantial. You know, you cannot ignore um, how much has been achieved in such a short space of time. And I think Moon River, I think Moonbeam, I think Akala, those those sort of, t- you know, the big boys of the Polkadot and Kusama ecosystem are still set for real strength and real growth again. As I said, Moon River, their smart contract platform allows for interoperability across multiple chains. Uh, they've got bridging for the NFTs across Ethereum. Polkadot is going to grow because interoperability is vital to the future of cryptocurrencies. Um, and Moon River allows for that. Moonbeam allows for that. Both of which I expect to do well. But Moon River, I still think can run back up in price quite substantially. There's 6 million tokens knocking about right now. There's going to be a max of 10.6 million. You probably still got a bit of a, a plummet to go in terms of price. Bear in mind that you know the rest of the tokens will probably be released across the next year. Um, because I believe, unless they've changed rules... All tokens needed to be distributed by the end of uh, the parachain slot. And the parachain slot, as far as I'm aware, is still two years. So the remaining tokens still have to be released. Still looking at 4.7 million. So you could see a market dump still for Moon River. But what? why can't it get back up to substantial price action? Like even just 100 bucks gets it back up to a billion dollar market cap when it hits the total supply. And I, I don't. I I think these parachains, particularly these polka dot, like these these blue chip, let's call them blue chip parachains for polka dot, and Kusama still have a lot of room to go up in price. I mean, fundamentally, if it got back up to five hundred bucks, you'd be looking at a market cap of five billion. Now, five billion is not huge in the scale in the scheme of things when you're looking at again. Bitcoin being possibly, you know, probably breaking a new high in the next bull cycle in 2024, 25. Um, You're looking at Ethereum, probably 10K. So both of those alone will have market caps of, you know, trillion plus dollars. So why can't Moon River have 5 billion? It seems very, very achievable to me. I'm not saying necessarily it's going to smash up to 500 but it really can. The key thing for Moon River in terms of that growth is putting out some really exciting dApps and putting out some uh, really exciting DeFi protocols that they can engage with and interact with and provide the infrastructure for. If they can provide the smart contract infrastructure for real quality DeFi, real quality dApps, real quality NFT um, projects, of course Moon River can run up to 500 bucks. But it does have to do those. If Moon River does nothing from now till the next bull cycle, it probably won't do much. It probably run back up to maybe hundred bucks. But if they do the right, if they can really substantially grow that ecosystem, which I have every faith they can, given what they've done in a year, then five hundred bucks is quite achievable. Um, but what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below and. If you are a returning viewer, hit the subscribe button. Uh, you don't want to miss these videos. They'll make you money and they'll save you money. So hit the subscribe button so you know what's happening. And guys, if you want to see the coins I own right now, you can go to copymycrypto.com. Um, on the site, I share my portfolio. I, the members get real-time updates anytime I buy or sell a coin. On top of that, I release videos on a daily basis talking about the markets. Um also have tutorials set up so the people that are brand new to crypto which you know we've got thousands of members a lot of them have never invested in anything so those tutorials help them along and there is a history of success on the channel there is a history of success on the site we will make sure that the members know all about the big gainers um i found phantom in 2020 did a dedicated udemy course all about it saying it would 100x or more uh, obviously, it did way, way, way more than that. Um, and when I find the next Phantom, I'm going to go onto my site. I'm going to tell my members about it. I'm going to tell them what gains I think it can have. And I'm going to tell them what percentage of my money I'm putting in. 
They can copy along if they want, takes the work out of it for themselves, take, and it can take the work out of it for you. If that interests you and you want to make your life and your crypto investing simpler, then go check the site out, guys. Um, there's a clickable link in the description. And last couple of things. So Gemini have slammed uh, Silbert, CEO Sil Barry Silbert of uh, Digital Currency Group over his tactics. Uh, now this <clears throat> kind of bodes badly um, if DCG are in trouble. So <clears throat> DCG owns um, Genesis. And the company's lending arm halted customer withdrawals in November after the downfall of FTX. And reportedly, it owes users of Gemini's crypto exchange uh, earn product around $900 million. Now, one of Gemini's founders is calling out Digital Currency Group CEO over what he calls bad faith stall tactics. So Cameron Winklevoss tweeted an open letter um, out to DCG founder uh, Barry Silbert on just yesterday, addressing what he characterized as evasive tactics by DCG and Silbert as they collectively try to resolve the situation. Um, and this is basically the letter. So we appreciate that there are startup costs to any restructuring and at the time, and at times things don't go as fast as we would all like. However, it is now beginning becoming clear that you have been engaging in bad faith stall tactics. Winklevoss, who started Gemini with his twin brother, Tyler, wrote that Silbert has thus far refused to get into a room with Gemini leadership to hash things out, along with refusing to agree to a timeline with key milestones. After six weeks, your behavior is not only completely unacceptable, it is unconscionable. The idea in your head that you can quietly hide in your ivory tower and that this is all just this will all just magically go away, or that this is someone else's problem, is pure fantasy. <clears throat> Winklevoss noted that Digital Currency Group owes Genesis uh, 1.675 billion dollars, citing combined figures that Silbert shared with investors in November. That figure includes a 575 million loan due in May plus a $1.1 billion promise, promissory note due in June, tied to the collapse of Three Arrows Capital. I am presuming, by the way, that is meant to be 2023 and not 2032. <clears throat> in a tweet response, Silbert refuted the framing around the money that DCG owes to Genesis, while also claiming that DCG re recently sent a proposal to both Gemini and Genesis. Um, yeah. It's all a bit rough, isn't it? And this is the problem. And this is something I said about FTX. Is the fallout from FTX was going to be substantial and and um, long, uh, like going to go on for a very, very long time. Um, I am expecting that we're going to see stuff like this dragging out over the next couple of years. I'm afraid. Um, so this drama is going on. We've still got the FTX drama and the impen you know, the, the, the court case that's going to be against uh, Sam Bankman Freed. Um, but in, and you know, Digital Currency Group, if they're in trouble, which there's not necessarily any evidence they're in trouble, or not tons of evidence or anything that they're in trouble. Um, not in the same way that there was for FTX. Um, but Their portfolio is substantial. You know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Filecoin, Hedera, Flow, Zcash, Decentraland, the Graph Stacks, Basic Attention Token, LivePeer. I can't believe people still trade LivePeer. Um, Horizon Civic, Reserve Rights. You know, they've got they've got their hands in a lot of uh, crypto. So if they crash or if they end up, you know, in trouble really in trouble like ftx trouble or alameda research trouble that's going to have substantial impact on the market um so that's something that everyone needs to watch closely at the moment uh, but in slightly more positive news while i really really can't stand the world economic forum as a as a collective or even many of the individuals in there um what they want happens and they've said that crypto and blockchain can Technologies will continue to be an integral part of the modern economy. 
Um, they came out in a blog post saying that uh, that indeed, as a test of the staying power of digital assets and blockchains at the core of financial services, watch what the big banks and mature financial services firms do, not what they say. Uh, because there is a strong belief that they, uh, from the WEF, that big banks are going to end up flying into crypto. Um, so ignore the FUD around what they say and focus on what they do. Because if they do, in fact, plow in, that's where the money is going to go. Um, and they believe, firmly believe that big banks are actually, a big, big banks adoption is going to be what really drives this market over the next few years and we're in a bear cycle probably for another year guys so watching what these what these huge banks do is key uh, because that'll give you a leg up in the next bull cycle so keep an eye on that stuff as well folks as will i and that is it from me take it easy folks bye bye